What is up amigos? Today we are looking at the aerodynamics of a windshield and hood angle. We're going to be going through what is this angle. We're going to then go through the general aerodynamics of that, including the drag mainly. And we'll go through the effects of changing this angle and the effects on the drag and aerodynamics. So first of all, what is this angle between the windshield and the hood? So if we have a regular car and we have the hood here and we have the windshield here, it's this angle here and we're going to call this alpha. And in previous videos, we've been talking about how the flow hits the front and we'll have some sort of cooling flow coming in and some flow will come around the top. And depending on how this edge here and the hood angle is, the flow may attach, may stay attached or separate. So if you haven't looked at those videos, check them out. Let's assume that this front part has been designed very well so that the flow stays largely attached. Even still, as the flow comes along, depending on what this angle is, it may still detach at this point and then reattach on the windshield. So we'll get a flow kind of looking like this. And we'll get some sort of recirculation zone in this region here. And this really depends a lot on the alpha angle. So what does this mean for the drag? If we get flow separation in this zone, it will increase the drag a little bit, but not as much as what you might think. And the reason why is because we actually have some, often we have cooling flow or some flow in for the interior being sucked off here and coming back into the cabin or wherever. So the amount of recirculation zone that we have is actually smaller in real life than what we may expect because some of this area is being sucked out. So that means that the streamlines can now stay attached a little bit better because of that suction zone. Nevertheless, there will still be some sort of recirculation here and that will not be beneficial for drag. So how does this angle affect the amount of drag here? Well, again, it does affect the drag quite a bit, but not nearly as much as what we might think. So if we were to plot the alpha angle here and we have the drag coefficient on this axis and we go anywhere from zero to 180, let's say, so it goes from being like the entire range, we'll see that generally speaking, as we have a, it will start to decrease and will actually be start to decrease from about the 90 degree angle and then it will start to plateau. So this range region here is not really physically feasible because that means that the hood is going, the uh, windshield is going to be reflected back this way and that's going to be even worse. I'm going to have a, a bigger drag. But once we start to get to this point and we start to reduce this angle, or increase that, sorry, to 180 degrees, then we'll see a reduction in drag. And this reduction goes, you know, we might get, if we go from 130 degrees to 140 degrees, which is about a standard angle change maybe, so 10 degree difference in this range, we'll get a delta CD of about minus 0 0.01, so 10 counts. Again, that is a decent amount, but not nearly as much as what you may think based on how important this zone uh, you may think it is. The hood and the front part that we covered in previous videos are significantly more important than this angle here, predominantly because of this cooling flow coming down. Also, as the flow comes up, depending on what the roof is doing, it may stay attached or may separate. And we'll cover this in the second video. So that's the aerodynamics of the windshield and hood angle. We've gone through what the angle is, and this is the angle between where the hood meets the windshield. We've talked about the general aerodynamics of it. So the flow often separates. In fact, usually it does separate. However, it's not as bad as what we may think because we do have some flow coming through to the interior and that makes that separation zone smaller and allows the flow to stay attached a little bit longer. And depending on this angle as well, I should mention, if it's more, if it's more um, uh, acute, then that's gonna push the separation bubble back towards the hood. The more obtuse it is, the more it's going to go back towards the windshield. And the effect of changing this angle means that if we go from the 90 degree angle, which is like just a straight vertical face, <laughs> and we reduce this angle, we increase the angle, sorry, to more obtuse, the drag does drop, but not as much as we may expect. We might get a 10 count drag reduction if we increase the angle by 10 degrees, potentially. So that's in this video. If you want to get uh, a textbook, for example, that goes through this in more detail and other automotive aerodynamic textbooks, uh, or other auto automotive aerodynamics topics, check out um, Automotive Aerodynamics by Joseph Katz. You can find that in the link in the description and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out, amigos.